You know, when, when the new year rolls around, what do a lot of people do? They make resolutions. They make a lot of resolutions. Well, today I'm going to ask you not to, I'm going to ask you to do the same thing. I'm not going to do anything different. So as we start this year, and this is what this whole thing with this little while is going to be, I want to, I want you to make a resolution. I want you to resolve to focus your life on Jesus. I want you to focus on Jesus. Because in case you haven't known this, if you've never learned this, if you've been in the church any amount of time you haven't known this, I don't know how you wouldn't know this. But understand this. The Bible, the Bible, all of the Bible is all about Jesus. It all points to Jesus. Somehow, in some way, he's in there. He's intertwined in, in every single story that, 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 that is in the Bible. Whether, you may say, well, Pastor, even when I read some of these stories about all this depraved things people did, yes, because it talks about the depravity of mankind and their need of Jesus. The whole Bible talks about Jesus. And, and a lot of what uh, I'm going to share with you today actually came from one of my devotions. The first part of this came from one of my devotions as I started my quest, and my quest, my, my, my reading of going through the Bible again this year. Um, I've actually done this guy's devotion. This will be my third year doing it. Juan's third year doing his devotion. We didn't talk about his devotion we were doing. Um, she said, I decided to do so and so's devotion this year for 2020. I said, you know what? I said, so did I. And, uh, and, and this gentleman, uh, he has a lot of good commentary with the, with, with the Bible reading. And, and with, with he does his devotion reading through the Bible, he does he, he usually does uh, a, a, either a chapter or so reading Psalms or Proverbs. Then he does the New Testament, does the Old Testament, and he speaks a little bit of thing about it. And of course, in a sense, we're starting in a new year. If you're starting the Bible, you know, usually if you start to read, you go on a year through the Bible, usually if you're, in the Old Testament, you start where? Genesis chapter 1. In the New Testament, you start where? Well, 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 you, well, you, start, well you can, but, but usually you start with Matthew, because Matthew is the first gospel in, in, in the New Testament. Uh, now, what's interesting, if you ever read the Bible chronologically, if you ever do a thing sit down, read the Bible chronologically, right. it gives you a different perspective, too. Because then, then you realize, oh, this wasn't necessarily written. I thought it might have been written and stuff like that. Uh, but this is the following chronologically. But you know, I'm reading this. And, and, and so hit the fir very first devotion I had on January 1 was called Focus on Jesus. Hence where I get the title for today's message, focus on Jesus. But I knew before I was going to do this message, this message entitled here this morning, probably about two months ago, the Lord began to speak to me what we're going to be dealing with the first part of this year. And, and I'll say this again at the end of the message, but over the next little while, we're going to be looking at the thought because of Jesus, dot, dot, dot. And we're going to plug in those dot, dot, dots. And because of Jesus, what, what does that mean? What, what, what comes our way? And, and as I that was a thought in my mind, and as I read this devotion, I said, Lord, this might be a little bit of a good message to try to start this year off, because the whole purpose, from day one, I already knew what I was going to be preaching about this year, but day one of my devotions, I didn't realize it, the very first title was Focus on Jesus. And I'll tell you, that's some of the best advice you could ever receive in, in all your life, in your Christian walk. If, if, if you're not focusing on Jesus, there's... <coughs> You're going to have some struggles. You're going to have some struggles anyway, but you're going to have some un you're going to have some unnecessary struggles. You're going to have some unneeded struggles if you don't focus on Jesus. But but again, you know, as I told you, so I want you to resolve this year to focus your life on Jesus. And again, the Bible is all about Jesus. And like I said, now we're starting in Matthew. And Matthew, the New Testament in, in Matthew opens up with Jesus's family tree. That's, where, that's how Matthew opens up. He opens up talking about the genealogy of Jesus. And as you read the list of Jesus' ancestors, I don't know if you ever realize this or not, but it's incur it should be very, very encouraging to you. Here's the reason why. Because in his ancestors, you see that they include Tamar. Anybody heard of Tamar in the Bible? Tamar was an adulteress. She, she didn't necessarily really mean to be, but she felt like she was forced to be because her father-in-law didn't follow the customs of the day. 
to truly take care of her, so she became an adulteress, and she ended up sleeping with her father-in-law and became pregnant by him. But Tamar is included in the lineage of Jesus, an adulteress. Anybody ever heard of a person by the name of Rahab? Rahab was a prostitute. And Rahab's included in the lineage of David because she ended up marrying somebody who was in, in Jesus' family. So a prostitute is included in the lineage of Jesus. Ruth. She was a non-Jewish Moabite. She became a believer in God, but, but she was not raised that way. She was, as far as, a lot of times, as far as the law of Moses was concerned, she would have been to the outside of it. She wasn't allowed to be part of it because she wasn't a blood Jew. But yet, because of her faith and her faithfulness to, to her, to her mother-in-law, Naomi, she, she's in the lineage of Jesus. So you have an adulteress, you have a prostitute, and you have a non-Jew in the lineage of Jesus. And then you also have another who's heard of a guy by the name of Solomon. King Solomon. King Solomon, of course, we know he, he was one of the sons of David. But, but Solomon, when, when they named him, his mother's name was Bathsheba. Anybody heard of a woman named Bathsheba? Oh, yeah. I'll tell you, I'll tell you the easiest way. I'm a, I do this every time because it's one easy way to, to remember her name and what she did. And, well, not what she did. What, what. What, how it involves David and all this stuff. What well, David did, and you might remember her name, who did, David ended up having an affair with this woman, and her name is Bathsheba. But one way to always, the easy way to remember her name is, David was out on the terrace, out on the roof of his terrace one day, looking out over the city of Jerusalem, and when he did, he happened to see this woman bathing. He says, she's taking a Bathsheba. <laughs> All right, so it's one way to, to remember. I tell you, I did that with teens. I've done that with all my teens, with all my youth group, and they remember the name Bathsheba. <laughs> but Solomon was her son who was conceived after an adulterous relationship between King David and Bathsheba, and he became a, David's heir to, to, to the kingdom of Israel. And his name is included in the lineage of Jesus, as well as many, many others. See, understand, in Jesus' lineage, there wasn't a whole lot of perfection there. There weren't a whole lot of do-gooders. There were some, but there were, a whole, there were a whole lot who were not either. You know? So, and see, the, the reason why I said we need to be encouraged by that, because as we see through that, thankfully, God uses sinful human beings and since he used them, guess what? He can use you. He can use us too. So, 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 be, so be encouraged with that. So whatever your past, however broken your life may seem right now, God can use you to do something great with your life if you allow it to. Where you are right now doesn't have to be where you end up. When you allow God to get in the picture, when you allow Jesus Christ to come in, the way maker to come in and do a work in your life, it can change your whole circumstance because he is the story rewriter. He is the way maker. Amen. The very name Jesus means he will save his people from their sins. In Matthew chapter 1, Verses 21 through 23. You know, I wasn't going to go through and read all the lineage of his, of his, of his, of his ancestors, okay? Uh, but I am going to read this to you here. And it says, And she shall have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And all this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and you will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So I want you to think about something. Every time you use the name of Jesus, it reminds you that your greatest need is not for happiness or contentment, even though that could be a byproduct of knowing him and using 
his name. But what it points to is the fact that your greatest need is for forgiveness. Because what does his name mean? He saves his people from their sins. Our greatest need is for forgiveness. Therefore, we needed what? We needed a Savior. And Matthew points to all of that by, by referring back to uh, what the prophet said. See, in the beginning of Matthew, it shows us that Jesus is the completion of all that is recorded in the Old Testament. Understand this, and this, this is my sort of point number one of all of this. Jesus is the climax of history. Jesus is the climax of history. Matthew opens his gospel by summarizing the Old Testament story in terms of Jesus' ancestry. The Old Testament tells the story that Jesus completes. Matthew sets out the history of the people of God in the terms of equal periods. And here's what, when he talks about the genealogy of Jesus, he splits it up into three different sections, 14 generations of each. There's 14 generations as Matthew lines it out, from Abraham to David, because Abraham, Abraham is the benchmark there. And then he, he lines it out, 14 generations from David to the exile, because again, David was the benchmark of what it was to be king, of being a person after God's own heart, the same as Abraham. And then 14 generations from the exile to Jesus. The Jews were able to turn, return back home because God's favor once again came upon them and they began to seek His face truly once again. So, so there were there are three distinct periods in the life of the Jews. And Jesus is the one who comes, comes on to, to when it's finally said when it comes to Jesus, He is the climax of all of this history. From Abraham to David, David to the exile, exile to Jesus. Jesus is the climax of all of this. Jesus is the end of the line, and so far as the Old Testament story goes, and he is the climax of everything. So, so understand, Jesus is the climax of history. But not only that, all the promises of God are fulfilled in Jesus. All the promises of God are fulfilled in Jesus. So that would sort of be point number two. So point number one was really quick, wasn't it? The point number two is all the promises of God are fulfilled in Jesus. So again, focus on Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is the climax of history. Everything revolves around Jesus. Not only that, and the way it also revolves around Jesus is, is also that all the promises of God are fulfilled in Jesus. Jesus is not only the completion of the Old Testament story at a historical level, he is also the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies and all of God's promises. Matthew, in his, in his gospel, in certain accounts, by quoting the Hebrew scriptures that have been fulfilled by the events he describes and he tells, but by the different events that he tells. For instance, as we, as we read at the beginning to open the opening verse of our message in, in Matthew 1, 22 and 23, it says, All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child, and she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So there, he was saying, the birth of Jesus was to do what? To fulfill this prophecy. In Matthew chapter 2, verses 5 and 6, it says, In Bethlehem of Judea, they said, For this is what the prophet wrote, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Again, it was a fulfillment of prophecy. Matthew chapter 2, verse 17. Herod's brutal action fulfilled what God spoke through the prophet Jeremiah. Again, it's a fulfillment. Jesus' coming is a fulfillment of prophecy. Matthew 2, 23. So the family went and lived in a town called Nazareth. This fulfilled the prophet, what the prophet had said, he will be called a Nazarene. So again, you see all this. He's constantly letting you know what I'm writing to you about. Matthew, throughout his entire gospel, what I'm telling you about is, is this individual I'm writing to you about, he is the fulfillment of prophecy. He fulfills all the promises of God. In Matthew chapter 4, verses 14 through 16, it says, This fulfilled what God said through the prophet Isaiah. 
in the land of Zebulon and Naphtali, beside the sea, beyond the Jordan River in Galilee, where many Gentiles live, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who live in the land where death cast its shadow, light has shined. Again, it's a full, he was a fulfillment of prophecy. Talk about when he was starting his ministry, he was bringing light to the world. He was bringing light back to the world. Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. This fulfilled the word of the Lord through the prophet Isaiah who said, He took our sicknesses and removed all our diseases. You see, again, he, he reiterated time and time again its fulfillment of prophecy. Matthew 12, 17. This fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah concerning him. Matthew 21, 4. This took place to fulfill the prophecy that said. In other words, so Matthew, all throughout his gospel, is declaring that Jesus is the one that prophecy talks about. He is the climax of history. All the promises of God are fulfilled in him. So you need to focus on Jesus. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. Jesus. Mm -hmm. I see, here's the thing. Matthew's not the only one who declared that. In fact, as all the Gospels declare that Jesus is the promised one, that, that, that he is the climax of history, that everything revolves around this one named Jesus. But I want to read some other portions of Scripture that talks about Jesus fulfilling God's promises. And I'll, I'll, this next one I'm going to read here, I'll deal with it a little bit more fully next week. I'm not going to dive into it today, but I'm going to dive into it next week. In Luke chapter 4, verses 17 through 21, here's what we read. It says, the, script, the scroll of Isaiah, the prophet, was handed to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where this was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. He rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the attendant, and sat down. All the eyes of the synagogue looked at him intently, and then he began to speak to them. This scripture you have just heard has been fulfilled this very day. Understand, when Jesus came, it was a game changer. Why, why, why is it, you know, that, that's why, like I, I've shared this to you in the past, i shared this to you in the past. Most of the time, most people don't care if you talk about God. Because God can mean anything to anybody. Christians, when we talk about God, we're talking about the God of the Bible. We're talking about Yahweh or Jehovah, whichever name you want to use, they're both the same, so, all right. When the Muslims talk about God, they talk about Allah. And understand this. Allah and Jehovah are not the same. Yes. Did you hear me? Allah and Jehovah or Yahweh are not the same. They are completely different. Okay? When Buddhism talks about God, they're talking about Buddha. They're, they're, they're Savior. Just so, I, we could just go on and on. So many times people don't really mind you necessarily talk about God because God, God could be... I, I used to show this video uh, in Euchre from time to time where uh, this guy says, uh, he walks up to this guy in, 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 a, in a park and it's called It Is To Me. And uh, and he holds up a ball. And the guy looks and says, what's that? He says, it's Jesus. He says, what? That's a ball. He says, well, it's Jesus. He says, that's not Jesus. That's a ball. He says, well, it is to me. See, people can claim anything to be anything they want. But, you know, I, in that story, I, told, I brought the name Jesus. He brought up some other things. Again, it's a pretty good show some other time. But... People don't mind you just talking about God because God's the fine heavenly one to be. Where people get upset, it's like even 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 in the legislation, didn't really start 
tomorrow, on Wednesday actually. They go back to work tomorrow. With the, Maryland, the Maryland General Assembly comes back into session on Wednesday. They have people coming and pray. And they, they can mention God all they want. As long as, as long as, they don't say Jesus. As long as they don't utter the name of Jesus. So, 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 so Wanda has told me, they're, they're, a friend of ours, he gets asked to pray for one way. He's actually a delegate. He doesn't use the name of Jesus, but the thing is, if you're a believer, you know exactly who he's talking about because he'll say, in the name of the Son of the One, who died, he does all this stuff without saying the name of Jesus, but yet he's, the, he's declaring him like the Prince of Priests, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He's not saying his name, but every, every title there is to name the name of Jesus, he, he ends his prayer with. <laughs> so there's ways to get around it if you want to. <laughs> yeah, but but pe people don't mind you necessarily saying God, but it's, it's but when you say the name Jesus, see, the name Jesus narrows it down and brings it all to a head. It makes it very clear who you talk about. When you name Jesus, that means you're talking about the Bible. That means you're talking about the God of the Bible and no one else. You're talking about the one who uh, who sat there and said, you know, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the Father except by me. He's the one who said that in John 14, 6, which was my next scripture verse. And he's the one who declared it. It narrows it all the way down. Jesus, he is all, of, all of God's promises are fulfilled in him. Jesus is the climax of history. Everything is about Jesus. Without Jesus, we cannot even approach the Heavenly Father. It's all about Jesus. And that's why the name of Jesus is so important. That's why it's so important to focus on the Bible. I mean, not on Jesus. And focus on, on the Savior of the Bible, Jesus Christ. Like I said, when you talk about God, and again, I'm, I'm not belittling God the Father. Because He is the Father. He, 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 he's the big cheese. And the reason why I say that is, yeah, we know Jesus Christ is King of the Lord of Lords, but in, in Corinthians, we read about how it says, the day's going to come once Jesus puts everything under his power, once Jesus conquers everything, he's going to take all the authority he has obtained and he's going to hand it over to the Father. Amen. And then he himself will come under subjection to the Father. Yeah. Again, not that he's never been out under subjection of it, but he will truly give it all to him. And, he, and then God the Father will truly reign supreme. He reigns supreme anyway, but but it just tells it, it tells us that. But 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 everything it centers on Jesus. In Acts two verse twenty two it says the people of Israel list people of Israel listen. God publicly endorsed Jesus the Nazarene by doing powerful miracles, wonders, and signs through him, as you well know. To hear Peter's addressing those who are there on the day of Pentecost. Jesus has only been dead for about maybe um, 50 days now. Well, he was dead. His resurrection happened 50 days early. So the crucifixion of Jesus only happened about 50 days prior. And he's saying, look, you know, it, this, none of this what you see going to surprise you because all of this revolved around this one name, Jesus. And then in, in Acts chapter 2, verse 36, it says, so let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Again, it's all about what? It's all about Jesus. And then in Acts 4.12 it says, There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. And who is Peter talking about there? He is talking about Jesus. They, they declared that, as the scripture said, He is the stone that the builder rejected. And that rejected stone has now become the cornerstone. Jesus was rejected, but he became, the, he became the principle of all things. It's all about Jesus. Our focus must be on Jesus. And in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, the, the scriptures tell us, and you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. 
Jesus did everything perfectly. There was nothing beyond his power. Then all of a sudden, when you hear this one, I said, it's all about this. And you hear this here. Now that your mind flashed back to what we were, we've been talking about over the last four to five months. When I talk about what we have in Jesus, who he says we are. Remember, I told you, when I said, now what? When Jesus says, for those who believe in me, the same works you see me do, you will do also. He says, I tell you the truth. Do you remember? That's why it's so important. If we keep our focus on Jesus and understand who he is, first off, we can truly experience him as Savior like never before. And all of a sudden, we can, his power will come alive in our lives, and we will experience him in such a full way that all of a sudden, the power of the Holy Spirit will just break forth in us. And not only as what it says here in this scripture, we're saying, it says, you know that God and when Jesus were natural, but the Holy Spirit and power that Jesus went out around, went around to be good and when all who were pressed by the devil God was with him. Jesus saying, this same thing is available to us also. But the hinge pin to it all, the link to all of it, is this one named Jesus. Without him, we have nothing. It's all about Jesus, so focus on Jesus. So I'm going to close with just a couple of thoughts here. And I'm going to have some to get in place. And as I told you throughout this message, Jesus is the climax of his year. Jesus is the hinge pin of it all. It all, it all yeah. culminates with him. All the promises of God are fulfilled in Jesus. See, all of history, all of prophecy, and all promises are complete in Jesus. Did you hear me? All of history, all of prophecy, and all promises are complete in Jesus. So what does that mean? It means your whole life is complete in Jesus. If you know him as your Lord and Savior. Your whole life is complete in Jesus. Every part of your life, work, family, relationships, friends, memories, and dreams are complete in Jesus. There is no lack. He is an all-sufficient Savior. Whatever's going on in your life, He is the answer. There is no other answer than Jesus Christ. There was, there was a song written back in the 70s called Jesus is Still the Answer. And, and, and again, it was, it was proclaimed again. You know, they were trying to say, you know, um, people were trying to say that modern that modern medicine has the answer. Also, the bottom line, when it comes to all things, Jesus is still the answer. Amen. Whatever your need is in life, Jesus is the answer. I don't care what the need is, Jesus is the answer. So I want to encourage you again, as you start off this year, make it a point. To focus on Jesus. Focus on Him. Focus on Jesus. And like I shared with you earlier, I said over the next little while, we're going to look into the thought, because of Jesus, dot, dot, dot. It's all about Jesus. And I want us to start this year off. I mean, like, like never before. And again, I know, I know every, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here this morning, okay? And I know that. I'm preaching to believers. I, I'm pretty sure everybody in here this morning is a believer in Jesus Christ. So I know I'm preaching to the choir. But I want to encourage you. If you make a special emphasis this year to really get your mind, like, laser focused on Jesus. Say, Lord, help me, help me each and every day. Before I, before I lay my head down at night, say, Lord, Lord, thank you, Jesus, for this day. And when I wake up in the morning, say, Lord, thank you for allowing me to live another day. And you're probably saying, Pastor, why, why didn't you say, why didn't you say when you're waking in the morning, say, Jesus, thank you for allowing me to wake and then I lay my head down to say that because I'm just doing what it did. In the, we're, we're at the beginning, right? We're talking the first. The first chapter of the New Testament and the first chapter of the Old Testament, what came first? Night or day? Night day. So I want, to, I want us to start it off the way God started it off. We'll lay our heads down. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being for God this day, for being such a good Savior. 
and when you wake up and when you wake in the morning, say, Lord Jesus, thank you for allowing me to wake in another day. And somehow, someway, let me bring honor and glory and praise to your name. It's a it's Jesus, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. So focus on Jesus. And the way I want to do that as we end our service this morning. So we, we introduced this song to you this morning. The Waymaker. I want us to end our time together declaring that He is the Waymaker. And I don't know if you picked up on it as we were singing the song, but one of the bridges says this. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. And I love how, how the part of the bridge you put here, you never stop, you never stop working. Understand, he's always working. He's always doing things. Because that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. So in this first Sunday, in January of 2020, Let's truly get our focus on Jesus. And say, Lord, help us throughout the rest of this year, like never before, to keep our eyes upon you. Like I said, over the next little while, we're going to be talking about because of Jesus, dot, dot, dot. But let's end our service today giving him the praise that he's worthy of. Can we do that? Let's give, let's end our time just praising his name. And if you would, let a little bit of your reservedness go by and just truly begin to worship the Lord this morning. As you begin to sing to Him, just pour out your heart to Him in praise. Declare that He is the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. That is who Jesus is. Amen. Stay with us this morning. Let's end our time together. Sing your praise to His name. Amen. You are here.